Hi, I'm Wayne the Boat Guy, and in this video I'm going to talk about boating in shallow water. In other words, not getting your boat damaged or stuck on a sandbar. So I'm sitting out here on a beautiful October day in the middle of my river, and off to this side over here, there is an island called Dobbins Island. And Dobbins Island is a place where a lot of boats actually come up along the side and hang out. It actually protects them from the wind, the waves aren't bad. So there's a place where a lot of boats uh, raft up and hang out and swim. It's just a fun place to hang out on the weekends for a lot of people. New boaters don't realize that uh, an island doesn't just pop straight up out of the river. Um, islands might have very deep sides to them, and they also might have very shallow sides. Off to my side over here is a marker, a green marker. And uh, I'm heading out towards the bay, and so your green markers are on your starboard side whenever you're heading out. And that green marker is there for a reason. It's not just to kind of make traffic flow around that marker. It's because to the left of that green marker coming from this way, it's shallow. It's very shallow. And uh, there are parts that are, when the tide is out, uh, two feet deep. And a lot of boats don't draft two feet deep. And what that means is that it's not just the bottom of your boat, how much of that sits in the water, but it's how far down your engine sits. And if you have uh, any kind of motor, uh, your engine sits down in the water because the prop is turning in the water. And what's important is to know the draft of your particular boat. For example, uh, my old boat was about two foot four inches, and I was able to measure from the water line down to the bottom of my outboard motor. The very bottom edge of it was two feet four inches, approximately. So that meant that anything less than that and the very tip of my outboard would possibly be hitting the bottom. And once again, people might think, what does that matter? That matters because if there's rocks down there and you're moving at any sort of speed whatsoever, you could actually bust and break that tip off the bottom of your outboard. You could actually bust the prop. You could, you could destroy your outboard motor. And it's not just outboard motors. Uh, props and outboard and outdrives and any of those things can get seriously damaged from hitting the bottom. Obviously, too, you don't want to hit your hull of your boat on the bottom either. What can we do to prevent bottoming out? So one of the best ways to keep from going into shallow water is to look at navigational charts. And there are some really cool apps and there are some things that you can buy for your boat uh, that display what the depths are around you. The neat thing about those is that lets you know what's ahead of you and how shallow or deep the water is in the direction that you're heading. So the advantage of those types of charts is that I can be coming out here and I can see that green marker and if I want to head left to go farther up river, I can quickly look at that chart and see how shallow the water is on the other side of that marker. Now, a caveat is those charts don't necessarily reflect what's going on currently with the tides in the area. So for example, the chart might show that it's three feet on the other side of that sign, but the tide might be out right now, and it might be an extremely low tide, and so we might be only a foot on the other side of that sign. If we're in only a foot of water, we're definitely going to do some damage to our boat if we're going on the other side of that sign. Conversely, it could be a very high tide and it says three feet and it's actually six feet. So that's easily navigatable, navigable <laughs> to go on the other side of that green marker. I'm not saying you should go on the other side of the green marker. I'm just saying that it's not as dangerous to do so when the tide is high than when it's low. So another thing you should be aware of is what tide you're at. Are you at a high tide or are you, you know, at a low tide? Also, just because you came out that way doesn't mean a couple hours later when you're coming in, you can go that way. 
because, once again, the tide may have come out during that time. So another thing that you can do is if you are in potentially shallow water is you can trim up your engine. So you slow down a little bit, trim your engine up, which actually tilts the back of the engine up closer to the surface of the water. And that keeps, that shortens your, your draft for how deep your boat sits in the water. Also by going slower, your boat will sit more level, hopefully. And so therefore the back of your boat won't be sitting as deep in the water either, if that makes any sense. So that's one way you can get through shallower water. But another thing to be aware of is how loaded your boat is and where the weight of your boat is located. For example, my last boat was a 19 foot runabout. If I was in it by myself, running the boat and I didn't have a whole lot of fuel on board, my boat was much lighter and much more level than it would be if I had four other people on board with a full load of fuel and food and all those kinds of things. That all weighted down into the back of the boat because that's where all my storage space was. So the back of my boat might be sitting a few inches even lower with all that on board. So there are expensive devices you can buy that will show you the depths of the water around you. But there's also a couple very simple apps that you can have on your phone. And what I do is I actually take a look at those apps before I even head out. Because when I know where I'm going and what I'm doing, I look around to see how shallow and deep the water is around where I plan to take my boat that day. It gives me a little bit of a heads up and I can start looking for certain areas to avoid or areas where I know that I need to be much more aware of my surroundings. Some people might ask, why don't you just use the depth finder that's on your fish finder or built into your boat? Problem is, is that shows the depth off the back of your boat and you're coming into shallower water. By the time that tells you you're in three feet of water, your front of your boat might be in two feet of water. The built-in capabilities to tell you the depth are fine, but they just tell you the depth of the back of your boat at that moment. And if you're moving forward, it doesn't tell you the depth or the shallowness of the water right in front of you. So the reason that green sign is back there is because we are supposed to stay to the right of that green sign as we're going out. Because to the left of that, there actually happens to be some wreckage uh, that's apparently barely submerged under the water. I haven't been able to find it. I've been trying to. From this angle here, it might look very different, but as you can see, that marker is pretty far away from the island. At one point in time, many, many years ago, this island came out much farther, as you can see from those cliffs. The island actually probably came out close to where that green sign is. There's very shallow water through there. And it's not a place to be taking any kind of boat that has anything more than a foot or two of draft. So those green and red markers, besides sort of guiding you into where some of the uh, marinas and those types of things are, or the channels, they also are to help keep you away from disaster. Many times the people who end up beaching their boat, uh, busting up their prop, uh, or, or doing damage to their boat or getting stuck in some way on a, on a sandy shoal or, uh, or a sandbar are inexperienced boaters or people who've been traveling too fast. And not knowing the waterways that you're traveling in and knowing the obstacles that are under the water is a very important part of keeping your boat safe and making sure that you're not somebody who's having to call tow boat or the Coast Guard to help rescue you whenever your boat is stuck or your prop is busted because you hit it on something. Basically, spending just a couple minutes looking at a chart to see what the depths of the water are where you're going to be boating for the day before you head out can make all the difference in the world from it being a disaster to having just another great day on the water. So thank you very much for watching this short video and uh, please be safe out there on the water. I have some other videos right here that you should watch and also tips for new boaters.